fucking happy right now. I uh, I pretty much can't be contained. Uh, I apologize for any audio issues you're having. I gave it a light college try on on the fixing them. I'll deal with it later. But right now, I just wanted to go live because if I don't talk about what I just witnessed today, I'm basically going to hyperventilate and fall into a coma. And uh, we need that to not happen. So, <laughs> good evening, everybody. I'm uh, going to be joined by Haywo again because he might actually be able to, like, rein in my unabashed, uh, <laughs> like, like uh, glee uh, for this. And uh, we might not go the full rant cam view the whole time because we've got pictures accompanying all this shit. But first of all, goddamn Xerxes platform! Awesome! <laughs> like this man, th a cod piece like this, and it turns out his mount is your mom because he's gonna fuck shit up. <laughs> Haywo isn't audible. Ugh. He sounds perfect on my. He sounds perfect on my side. Let me turn. Let me crank him up. Oh, I know why he's not audible to you. Let me turn on my desktop audio. Boom. How about that? Haywo, say some stuff. You guys can't hear him, can you? I know what happened here. All right, now try. Hello. There we go. I know what happened here. Um, well, fuck it. We did it live, so I can't reshoot it. But basically, I was super happy. I can't redo my joke. Oh, it was such a good joke, too. He was talking. Oh, well, I guess you guys will just have to imagine it. Pretend you were there. Yeah, pretend you were there. Um, that joke was... Yeah, he's the only he's the only Mortark that doesn't have a mount. Mm -hmm. When they saw the... When we saw, like, the pictures and the little video, and we're like, oh... The art doesn't have him on one of the big, uh, you know, Mortark mounts that everybody else. Right. Does this mean he's less important? No. No. It is. He still has a huge base, and he's just fucking standing on a platform, uh, being, being helped by his retinue of samurai. Oh my! He does not need a mount. His mount is that ka. Like, his like. Look at this. And so I heard from um, uh, Jared, he's one of the gentlemen in the crowd there, um, he, he basically like directly tweeted at me, um, because I was just like losing my shit over this, this Xerxes platform this man is on, and, uh, and like apparently as he charts, he gets better. Yes. Well, because he doesn't take you seriously until he realizes you're, uh, you know, an actual opponent. Absolutely! Isn't that like, fucking... Oh, I guess I should stop playing around. It, it seems you're a serious combatant. Yeah, it's perfect for this. It, it, it stays in line with my thing about, like, how I play boss armies. Like, until, like, it's the most, bo like, big bad evil guy boss thing where he's like, I'm not even taking you seriously yet. Ah, uh, Like, I bet you he's gonna have a ranged attack in the form of the that fucking, like, crow there. Uh, so, like, yo... <laughs> and I wonder if you, like, fight each of his, like, little retinue men. Like, because obviously this dude with the, the, like, katana, like, holding it off to the side is the, like, second in command, right? And so, like, you got to get through him to get through, like, to the Mortark first. And, like... What a, what a proud stance by Samurai Man, by the way. Oh, what, it's... What a great model that is. Oh, it's so good. This is This is so perfect. The way it works, like, I just, I, I like interesting mechanics, and I actually, I got a lot of these photos ahead of time so that I could, I could zoom in here. I'll just bring this over real quick. Um, so I got these, these models ahead of, or I got this ahead of time, but look at this, this proper, this proper gent here. He's even got the chin, dude! <laughs> like, the disapproving chin. Oh, so good. Like, everyone's gonna be excited about the, like, like the 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 mo the Mortark and I'm just like oh yeah but what about the samurai standing next to him? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, it's like it is difficult to look that proud while standing next to a cod piece that is the size of your face. So like, and the same level. Let's, let's <laughs> like it's even directly. Yeah, 
Oh man, this is oh, it's so good. It's so good, and it's another one of those models where like the longer I stare at it, the more the more like details I see. So we actually have like a busted shield off over here for somebody who's already failed to challenge him. And I I, I wonder what's on this scroll that like prostrating man, prostrating skeleton is holding up to the Mortark. Like what? What is on this scroll? Is it just, like, who's next? Like, he's got a hit list or something? Or, like, his next challenges? Because they have to, like... <laughs> they have to, like... There's so many people who want to challenge a man with a cod piece this glorious that uh, that he's got, like, a list. <laughs> yeah, we got, like, Birdface here with... He's holding a burb. Weird. Like, maybe he's the scouty man. He's also got like a like a cage here, so he's like he must like maybe there's some like scouting mechanic. There is another angle. Uh where's the other angle? Toss me a link if you can. It's a bunch of hieroglyphics. Yeah, so it's like totally his hit list. But he's up on the Xerxes platform. Perfect. Um, this is awesome. Got like looks like they have little like power stones in their chests to like contain all their souls. And so I was wrong about one thing. I was right about them having a like having soul like being soul container constructs. But like uh, they're staying on theme here. Nagash uh, Nagash is pissed that Sigmar stole all the quality souls, so he decided to shove several souls <laughs> in, into one container. <laughs> Which is pretty sad. Yeah, when when God. You know, when God gives you lemons, you steal people's souls and throw them into giant bone construct. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, like, pretty, pretty, pretty pumped about that. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Other angle. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I saw this one. I was going to get to this one later. But, yeah. We got dudes holding a bird with, like, it's got a message. So, like, this makes me think there's some sort of, like, maybe a scouting mechanic or, like, um... Like, he's going to have something to do with the battlefield with this man, right? And, like, you must lose... You probably lose... I'm doing a good job of selling this. Like, but this is this is the hit list. This are the, these are the next people up to challenge, like, Grand Liege, like, Codmaster. So, so, so first he's got to fight, like, like, uh... uh like, so my liege, Vandis Hammerhand, sends a message. <laughs> what does he say? He says you ain't shit, my lord. <laughs> we ride. <laughs> oh, man. This is why Swift Talk agents got nerfed, so that we could get their abilities. <laughs> yeah, so like uh, Catacross, which I like to play. It's like Catacombs. It's a little bit of a, a little bit of a play, you know, a little, little bit of a pun. Um so uh, right here we have what I, I think is going to be our stand-in for like actual like regular ass skeletons. So we're gonna have these like little dudes. Um, now what I th uh, Tristan, you're here and you're kind of upset with the frowny faces and stuff. Uh, first of all, I actually kind of dig this guy. I'm not sold on here off to the left. These dudes look elite. Yes, they do. I'm not sold on this man over here, but I dig this guy with the with the two hander. And, uh... Two-hander looks like he is... He's he ready is, to fuck. This like, guy he's is like straight the... out of, like, a real bad horror movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, like, where they... Like, this is like the... Like, you take a bad horror movie, and then the seventh sequel is in space, and that's this guy. Right. Yeah, this this man fucks. And, uh... Like, you think they're grinning jackasses? I think they tried to give skeletons personalities, and maybe didn't quite get there, but we have... We know for a fact that they're like their pictures on their website never do the models justice for the most part. Usually not, yeah. And so Usually I, I see them in person and I'm like, oh, okay, this is actually this is these. Yeah, I bet that I bet that these guys, like especially if you leave their faces in shadow rather than actually try to fill in teeth, because painting teeth is just always fucking awkward. Like. I think if you leave their faces kind of like sh a little bit shadowed and like give them a light, like a light glow, I think you're going to have a lot better, better face. Their helmets are about a head size too small. Perhaps. Good thing only. I'm actually, I'm pleased with these guys. I, don't, I like them. Uh, I like them. Even em. the one, okay, the one in front, you know, front row center, he is admittedly like the derpiest, I suppose. Mm -hmm. 
his his jaw kind of look, reminds me of uh, what's that crocodile dude from Batman? Uh, uh, uh Killer Croc literally is his Killer name. Killer Croc, yeah. yeah. Kind of reminds me of that. Everybody else, I really like though. But the you know giant, what? The giant grins. I'm actually a fan. I, I I like that they tried to give skeletons personality. That's I, I love it. And I know there's skeletal and constructs. Look at all this but... armor. These aren't these aren't five up save. These aren't like six up save, five up against non rend armor. This is this is bone cast armor. You know, bone cast. Yeah, this is bone cast Eternals. I, I my favorite those, one. I bet those. I bet those cavalry are going to have a three up naturally, just like uh, Skull Crusher. Give it to me, yeah. My favorite one though is is top right here. I love this guy. Um, I love the angles on his head. Um, I, I like. I think his grin is malicious and like it's it. This is a villain about to fight you. But these are like conceivably the bat, like sort of like pseudo elite battle line. Um, in death, this is what I've always wanted. Like I'm so happy for this. Um, what if these are what new grave guard just look like? Like new scroll and a new. Uh, I I don't see that happening. I don't think that's happening. But I I I, I know. I, but but a important part of shows like this is to say stuff you don't think is going to happening, and then the host is like, "Nah, let's be reasonable. This is a better." Th this is. I mean, sorry, I'm not used to live. <laughs> <laughs> Like I I I like these, like Tomb Guard. I mean, and here's the thing, Tristan is is the models, the poses are more dynamic, and I think that's what they were trying to go for here because that's that's a big hallmark of the new AOS sculpts versus like old sculpts. Even like the IJ, we were kind of talking about it. I think that was last night already. We were kind of talking about it last night how like IJ were were technically new for Age of Sigmar sculpts. Fucking Maw Crusher looks great, you know. The actual like standard uh the standard war boss on foot looks fucking great like it's a very the dynamic on foot is one of their best models it's in the game so dynamic so yes brutes are super good too gorgrunta mm -hmm. seems like a seven or a two depending on how much you like the actual mount mm -hmm. because you know from a certain angle they look really goofy and some people don't like it some people are like oh this is cool because of right. the humor right and and so but yeah all the all the new sculpts in in ij are are sweet like super cool looking yeah, I personally don't think Ard Boys look cool at all. I think they're really dumb looking. I don't like the pot belly, extendo butt, you know, forty k style orc. A lot of people do. Hang on, I gotta shut somebody down on on the internet. Just just don't real. Hold on, somebody's wrong on the. Somebody internet. is somebody wrong on the internet. I see on the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's lots of movement in all of these yeah so they're doing that more and more a lot of movement um, and and personality one of the, one of the thing yeah and, well one of the things i really like about aos models versus warhammer fantasy battle models and you can see this most distinctly with skeletons and ogre bulls mm -hmm. is that their modeling was really constrained by having to be in tight formations and so the ogres are like in these, all the model poses are almost in like a, a tube or a straight jacket or something. Like they can't, they can't breathe, I suppose, is a, is a way I could put it. Because they all have to be in formations and actually fit together in, in tiny cubes. Right. But AOS, AOS things can be dynamic and moving and kind of leaning over places. Obviously, at times, they lean a tad over. <laughs> The bases, which can be okay, and in the case of stuff like the black coach, definitely not okay. Like it's a full pylon yeah. that something reaches over the base. So like, yeah, you can go too far, but on the whole, I much prefer it. Yeah. Which is why I was a little sad to see ogre bulls in the uh, Maw Tribes vid, because I don't like ogre bull models. Uh, they're kind of tippy toe, standing up straight. Trying to stay within their little cube so that they can be lined up with, with their buddies in a in a square formation. Mm -hmm. And so I was hoping for a new model, which, uh, which, to be honest, just made them bigger and have a little bit more movement <laughs> instead of that weird kind of like, that weird kind of leaning forward like they're all Michael Jackson. The skeletons have that too, like basic skeletons, where they're all kind of leaning forward in this goofy way in the in the same way, and but really like really vertical. Yeah, like skeletons get super hooky with how how much they lean. 
on yeah. like the 25s, especially since the 25s have no heft. They're like the skeletons are one of the lightest models in the game. Um, speaking, continuing to speak about movement, I just I just want to like talk about how, like these poses. Like this guy here. So he's got a pretty like classic pose with the sword, like he's actually about to fight with it, but he's leaning in just a little bit more as to mock you. And they actually talk about in the descriptions is like uh, relentless, discipline, deathless. They they talk about like this, and like some of them they talk about being like like super uh, super refined and stuff, and some of them are arrogant. Like there there's they have the fact that they have personality as skeletons is part of their lore. Like it's really we'll get into it a little bit later, but like so I like that they're they're kind of representing it. You've got this guy, pretty pretty defensive, come at me, bro. Um, obviously, man sounding the charge, and like the guy in the top right, this is like gotcha, man. Like he's he's just like waiting, like he's he's waiting for you to like hit the like gotcha. Like he you think he's uh he's all about the defense with his shield forward. So I I like this. My favorite guy is bottom right with the two-hander, no question. No question? Okay. He's, he's, he's like, bone-covered hell, uh, Hellraiser. Yeah. Like, it's, it's so perfect. That's definitely my favorite guy. And not just because he's using a two-handed sword <laughs> instead of a cowardly sheep, but this is just my, you know, ogre biases, right? Right. Right. I like the, uh... And I like that they did tie in the, uh... The Morgast weapon stylings, actually. So, like, that that's a deliberate attempt. Um, and then, like, this is... Oh, so good. This is what I'm all about. Um, this guy maybe doesn't... This guy here, I think, in the center has, like... He looks too much like he's enjoying the ride. <laughs> but he's the standard bearer, so, like... <laughs> it kind of makes sense. Um, I like how the standard bearer is the most come at me. It could be. <laughs> like he's just like, like ah. His, his hands are not on the reins. He's just he's just like galloping, holding it with his knees. He's got the big flag. Yeah. yeah. It's like you basically can't even hit me. <laughs> Having the flag means I'm invulnerable. Come at me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because he is the one that like get taken off kind of last. Um, over here we get the Griff car we get the we get a plethora of skeletons that they are riding. First of all, each one of these is a distinct creature, which I actually kind of mentioned. I'm like, I would love it if each model in the unit is a unique creature. And fuck it, yo, ask and you shall receive. I'm I want these to be eels. You know, I want this to be like the unit of nine elite cavalry. Um, well, I mean, uh, except like looking cool, right? Yeah, except like looking cool, and not shit. You mean like beasts from Age of Sigmar itself, not just like humans and and horses? Mm -hmm. like, exactly. Like stuff from AOS. Yeah. Yeah. Like, remember? I think we even mentioned like, man, wouldn't it be cool if the cavalry was different creatures from actual Age of Sigmar, like Griff Chargers, and there's an undead Mornfang or whatever? Well, this looks a lot like an undead Griffhound on the right, or it not does. a Griffhound? Pardon me. Griffhound. Uh, what are those guys called? Griff Chargers, I believe. I, Griff Charger, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so we have, we have a, a little... There's a little double unicorn, a.k.a. Rhino, over there <laughs> on the right. The double unicorn. And then a dig horse. I guess he's got some some digging tools on there. Like yeah. shovel tusks and fucking wrath. <laughs> That's right. Um, the, one on the, the one on the left appears to have a hand hanging down. <laughs> Yo, know, like right, the dongly in front of the in front of the rhino. Look, man. Oh, he's, maybe they all have a dongle. Like a. The shoulders yeah, like are a, the shoulders are the skulls. middle one has like a. Yeah. yeah. Hey, he's got some bling. That's yeah. That's so he can put an extra ring slot on and have another magic item. It's right from D and D. Well, who, uh, hand of uh, what was it, Vecna or whatever. Hand of the mage or something like that. Hand of the mage was that what it was? Hand of the archmage. Um, it talks about how the, uh, what is it? The spearheads of Cavalos Death Riders, they're the arrogant ones. Uh, where is it? Well, of course, they're higher up. They get to literally look down on other people. The and backbone. Then, you know, main man himself, he's also taller than everyone else. Because yeah. he's watched Invader he... Zim slash Helsing, and so he knows that the taller you are, the more important you are. And, uh, and for Fist of the North Star, it's a universal rule. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the, the taller you are, the more important you are. So he knows. And uh, so, like, the backbone, see what we did there, of the uh, Ossiarch Bone Reapers are the legions of Mor uh, Mortech Guard and spearheads of Cavalos Death Riders. Each contains the souls of dozens of mortal warriors, and each is brutally effective combatant fighting with 
utter discipline, even in the most chaotic battles. These warriors aren't automata. They have personalities befitting their roles in Nagash's dark regime. While Mortec Guard are forthright and dutiful, Kavalos Death Riders are possessed of towering arrogance. <laughs> towering. Please, the name of one of their abilities, just the, the heading. Like, it's that bold, it's the bold words that describe what the ability is called. Please just have it be called Towering Arrogance and have some sort of ability. Yeah. Like that's what I want. Rules writers, get on it. Yeah, make sure this, make sure this. Like, Towering Arrogance. Uh, these don't ever flee, and if they watch someone flee, they laugh. <laughs> and if this is laughing, then it gets some bonus or whatever. I don't mm -hmm. know. More people flee from them or something. Yeah. Yeah, I love Demoralize. it. Demoralize. Yeah, I love it. So, towering arrogance. What a way to say it for these guys. So, these are the... Yeah, I, I'm I'm on board. Uh, I've already loved my Black Knights, so I'm ready for the my elite... I've, I'm ready for my elite cavalry version, right? Like, I, I'm, I want this. Um, the more elite echelons of uh, Ossiarch Bone Reapers are made up of a variety of bizarre and deadly construct warriors created by twisted magical bioengineers... Of Mortesian priesthood. Look at all those gibberish Give words. Me more big words, <laughs> yeah. please. More fantasy words. I want. Yeah. This is this is just what I wanted. All these these gibberish fantasy words that just sound metal as hell. This is everything I want. <laughs> like this, what's happening here is world building as they're just pitching me the thing I already want to do. And speaking of looking a little Sylvanethy, yeah, I'll, this 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 uh, this fine uh, gentle gentle. Gentle bone here uh, has a has a little bit of a little bit of a, a of a Sylvaneth vibe to it, but like look at this fucking headpiece. It's a mouth. <laughs> it's got oh yeah, it's a it's a jawbone that's been kind of opened like a gate a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, sounds like War Dancer set of rules. I, I you know I don't know. I'm just I'm open to a murder scythe. And remember last night. I had this moment where I was talking about how I really like Reap like I really like the Grim Reaper aesthetic, but uh, Grim Gas Reapers don't quite do it for me because what's underneath all the sweet like scythe and robes and shit? A fucking skeleton. You know that's what's missing. <laughs> and so like here we have. Well, if, if your if your main complaint with Grim Gas Reapers was was there weren't enough bones. Well, it looks like they made an army ex exactly yeah. for for your sensibility. Yeah, yeah, so I feel appeased here. Uh, love this model. I bet you it's going to be a shitty, like, foot hero. If it's the auto-include caster, hell yeah. Like, let's go. Right? Like, I'm all about it. Uh, and then we have... Yeah, like, if, if this guy is the necromancer of this of army. this army, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Like, hell yeah. Um, this is going to be sick. Please, please not the low tan of this. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, like, the more elite echelons of the, uh, the Ossiarch Bone Reapers, uh, and everyone's gonna shorthand it to Bone Reapers, which sounds metal as hell. <laughs> um, ne Necropolis Stalkers, so that must be what this, this, this is, um, for instance, are infused with the souls of four legendary warriors apiece, giving them the ability to shift person. Nope, nope, ne Necropolis Stalkers are the next guys. Shift personalities mid battle in order to change their fighting style. Oh, we have some more thralls, except maybe good. Okay, and so this is where um, they have like fucking three or four heads apiece. So like modeling, yeah, they're like those they're like those old statues where um they had a face in each cardinal direction. Yeah, yeah. or pulling a little from history, or like relicary of souls in uh World of Warcraft, like yeah. fucking flips its head. The yeah, fight was so awesome. Yeah, so we have our more we have our actual Morgast weapons. These are like super. These are like Goro Morgasts, Go Gorgasts. I I don't know. <laughs> um, and it sounds like their rules are going to be like swapping in and out of fight styles and stuff because they have like three heads. And okay, I'm for it. But I really want to talk about this guy at the at the front. This is good. This is peak model. <laughs> this, yeah. this, it's like. He's using a two-handed sword, right? Yeah. But what are you going to do with four arms? You're going to dual wield two-handed swords. Yeah. There's no other option. Whatever the rules are, like this guy's doing it right. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is this is awesome. This is I, I built D and D characters that that I gave them extra arms on a template so they can do this shit. This dude is named Mister Two by Four. <laughs> Mister Two by Four. Yeah, yeah. Two swords, four arms. Yes, he's gonna do work. Um, and these look like these models are gonna be kind of intricate. Maybe they won't be. I don't know. But they are these fifty millimeter bases. I wonder. They gotta be huge, right? Surely they're bigger than Stormcast. I'm thinking 50, probably. I hope... Well, I, what, I can't remember what the Morgast base is, but... Um, I believe Morgast is 50. 50? They're probably on the Morgast base. These, I these, don't think they're 60. Yeah, they're not 60. These, no these scream Morgast. Morgast scream when they look at how much cooler these guys look. No <laughs> offense. No offense. You really? Um, really? You think these are cooler? Than, I think Morgast still look pretty fucking metal. Yeah, they do. They also look cool. But, you know, when you're beat, you're beat. <laughs> Maybe, okay, the guys in the back row, we can talk about it, but the front guy? I, it's I, over. I, top right's my least favorite in this in this situation. Um, I, I, we talk about pose and motion. I don't know what he's doing here. Uh, whereas these other two, like, I know what... He's ready, to, he's ready to give you the right there, Fred, with the upper right arm. The other one's not so sure. Could these guys be like storm fiends? Maybe they're gonna have a complement of weapons, um, like that's. I mean, well, like storm fiends, it's like now their their weapons are assigned, right? But with these, or guys, you just you can't you just can't like uh, double, triple, and quadruple up in a unit of of the same weapons. You gotta spec. Right. You gotta uh, general. But I get that you can't specialize with them. But right. I, I, mean, I think that it's probably gonna be more like more uh, like thralls, mm -hmm. where it's like. They have two fighting styles. If they're fighting one wound guys, it does this. If they're fighting four wound guys, it does this. Mm -hmm. Except probably a little more elaborate, since they're elite and probably have more rules. Right. Yeah. So that I really like being able to switch fighting styles. That's a great. It's very interesting to me. Age of Sigmar has a problem where sometimes you buy a spe like a a uh, you want specialists because like in between take all commerce things can kind of suck. And so if you can actually switch what specialist the, the model is, this might be a way of solving the elite unit problem, yeah. right? So, like, if they can be Ren 2 fighters, and then they can be a ton of extra attacks, like, you know, hit better guys, and, like, like that's pretty awesome. So you don't actually have to have that problem with Kurnoth, where you're like, oh, do I equip him with size or do I equip him with swords? And then, like, these guys are just like, both. Come on. Like, awesome. Like a whole bunch of attacks without rend, and yeah. then a few attacks with rend two or something, but enough attacks so that they don't suck. Or you can hot swap them between, like they just on the like because it says that they magnetize their torsos. Well, no, it says giving them the ability yeah. to shift personalities mid battle in order to change their fighting style. So maybe it's a once per game. They can switch between rend rend two and extra attacks. You know. That I mean, I'm for that. Oh yeah, real, and you mean like decimator attack profile, where they attack everything within range oh, uh, with their one hit. Yeah, that'd be met that'd be pretty metal. So like they can be like they can be horde killers by hitting like. But it's way better than decimators because you don't just take this like hyper specialized thing that's only good against. It's like if it needs to be, it is, and if it doesn't need to be, then they can use something else. Right. Right. That'd be sweet. So, a way to solve the elite problem, if this works as I hope it does. So, like, I'm I'm all for it. Um, I want to know what this dude's all about. Uh, they don't. I, I I mostly skimmed, but they don't mention uh, Scythe Man. I hope he's like your obligatory caster man and not a fucking melee foot hero assassin. Those are just usually. He might be the low tan, right? I think. There's what? Is there two melee assassin heroes in the entire game that don't suck? Uh, how, how many are there? Are Tenebral the Shard is good, but you have to be... Tenebral Shard, he's good. Mm -hmm. But only with an artifact. What, uh, uh, Valkia the Bloody is okay. Mm -hmm. If her points didn't go up, she'd be still okay, but, like, decent. Right. Right. And so then, uh, after we get, like, the switch hitters, um, we have these, uh, the Osiark uh, Bone Reapers also make vast and horrific... War machines, and then like the butterfly is flying past me. Is this the shooting phase? Like, <laughs> I'm a death player, man. I'm not used to this. 
And it says that they're, um... Is this shooting? <laughs> yeah. The Mortec Crawler is a semi-sentient siege engine. This is like a you had me at hello. It's a fucking semi-sentient catapult? <laughs> That's so awesome. That devastates fortifications and formations alike with deadly hails of magical ammunition. Am I going to have something that can shut off terrain? No. No? Okay. I'm just... Destruction did and they nerfed it every single GHB in huge ways. Mm -hmm. But then again, uh, it is destruction. So yeah, it'll it'll shut off uh, terrain. No, no problem. <laughs> Yeah, it'll just, it'll just do, it'll that. Like, do that. It hits a Wildwood, and you can either remove the Wildwood from the table or reset it up wherever you want. <laughs> and whatever you, whatever models it lands on are just destroyed. So, um... But, yeah, that's funny. Um, High Elves used to be able to pick up a piece of terrain. In, uh, really? Yeah, in old, old, like, Warhammer fantasy battle, like... Like the Chaos Hell Cannon. Not familiar with the uh, the uh, the Hell Cannon. What is that? Uh, is that forty k? So, um, admittedly, there's a ton of uh, there's a ton of like Chaos War Scrolls, right? Um, it was sentient, right on. See, that just makes it cooler, right? And like, you have all these like bone men. This guy's got a cup of coffee because he knows what the fuck's up. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a couple yeah <laughs> he's like uh oh, what was that dude from avatar oh the fucking commander coffee, coffee cup mug. yeah <laughs> commander coffee cup colonel coffee mug we'll go ahead and zoom in here i'm sure it's probably like a hammer but i like to think this is a coffee cup like he's just here he's doing math you know mm -hmm. like somebody's got a plot trajectories this is the he's filled with four souls of humans who knew trigonometry mm -hmm. right Right, and then over here you have like you have like the powder man who's just like they're they're having a conversation, and this guy is real the the man up top, super excited about his job, <laughs> like like the catapult is semi sentient so he really isn't needed but he's pointing anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that way, that's the way to go. Well, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Thanks. We didn't know. And then I get a little bit of a starship troopers vibe, like the, it's. It's afraid with the the way this model looks. So it's got like the sort of bulbous head and the multi the, the multiple arms underneath. Um, this looks like a huge unconventional base too. More burbs. Yeah, we've had a we've had a good amount of burbs throughout. Uh, oh, you're right. That does look like an unconventional base. Mhm. Mm is that a new size of base or is that that the same I think that's the same size as the Grave Tide. Endless spell. Could be the Grave Tide. Like uh, anyway. uh, Black Coach, I think, has a weird oblong base, too. Uh, Black Coach, I think, is just a Stonehorn base, except it's leaning off both the front and the back by a full pile of think... All right. That one probably could have gotten a new base. Yeah. Or just been a terrain piece. Oh, dude. So, so Catacross is so awesome, he gets a first and last name. <laughs> he is Orpheon Catacross. Uh, so he's, uh... Does he have a title? Well, I think he's supposed to be the Mortark of the Necropolis. That he doesn't need a title because his name is impressive enough because you know who he is. Well, I think he's supposed to be the Mortark of the Necropolis, I think is what, what they said earlier. Yeah, I think that's what they said in the video. Yeah. Uh, which is awesome. So loading the, uh, uh, leading the, uh, good night, Tristan. Thanks for hanging out, man. And, uh, join us! Join us! Uh, in the Bone Zone. Uh, leading the uh, the Ossiarch Bone Reapers is none other than uh, Catacross himself. This is uh, no embittered spirit, arch schemer of the world that was, or devoted sycophant. Huh. Not some fucker from the world that was. So, uh, in other words, not Cetra. <laughs> Sorry, TK, not today. But a terrifying new paragon of unlife itself. Granted a new existence in a body of ensorcelled bone... Orpheon Catacross is Nagash's plan for the mortal realms made manifest. Efficient, remorseless, uh, remorseless, and instilled with a chilling disregard for life. He's a real chip off the old Black Pyramid. Uh, do -do -do, like fucking metal guitar riff just starts up. This guy's a goddamn badass. Please, please don't be Lotan. Please don't be Lotan or the turtle. 
if Games Workshop has failed us, has failed not just all death players, but any player anywhere, whoever has a hope of your sweetest model being your good thing, if this model fucking sucks. So, like, go full Flesh Eater Quartz, go full Slanesh and dial it back later, make this thing busted and as hated as Nagash in his heyday. Uh, also, he... Except actually good instead of just casual people whining about it. Yeah, instead of just casual people whining about it. Like, come on, just go all the way and dial it back later. Uh, let me have my fun. This posture, I love that the, the concept art is really, like, directly represented because it looks sweet. Um, uh, yeah, it's got Nagash's face on there, so he's he's loyal. Yeah, he's got the Nagash's... He, it says he's not a sycophant, though. Like, so he's not just like, is Nagash my liege? Like, yeah, he's not He's not uh, Manfred, right? Right, right. Um, and the other thing is, is the first thing that came to mind uh, when I was right about him being on a Xerxes platform uh, <laughs> uh, was that this is a quintessential centerpiece, which is one of my huge talking points for all of Age of Sigmar is I just, just, armies should have centerpieces. Like, just every army. If, if they don't get to have one, you have made their army wrong, you know? Um, Turtle and Tidecaster are examples of when you did it wrong. Um, you know, if you made an army that just ends up being 120 of your, of your just, your foot troops, like Night Haunt, you've kind of done it wrong. So, like, this thing screams centerpiece. Uh, I heard from, uh, people in the room that he's got rules where he actually gets better as he charts, which is fucking awesome it's unique and it it's flavorful because he's look at him he's not taking you seriously you maybe fight your way through like a couple of his his helpers here and then uh and then he just fuck and then he just like pushes uh pushes your shit in at the end uh i love it he's got yeah, it's a cool mechanic for a guy like m bison right who's like he's a half-life and he's like okay i'll fight you on your own level mm -hmm. i like the sash too and i assure you that'll be red in my army uh, sashes should be. I'm red. not sure why the sash isn't red in this one. I mean, color wise, obviously it's flesh tied together, so they wanted to they wanted to do that, and I understand it would bring everything together if it were. What a like it's direct center of the model. It's red, and then you get to. Um, I was listening to Vince Venturella on one of his like live hobby interviews, and there, he was talking about like how if like yellow's the thing then you just put, like, little splotches of yellow on the sword and, and in places. Like, you find places to put that color in that just brings your eye across the model. That's red for this. I mean, I, I, I could, I'd could i go bone colors and so on and so forth because it's going to be quick with contrast paints. Um, but then you take that red and you just you start to put it places. You find places so that it's going to take that. You have that bright red sash at the middle, and then it's just going to take you all over the model, you know? This is, this is I think, a hobbyist dream. Uh... Uh, which is why it's I'm already a diorama. Like he's just he is a diorama. Yes, which is sick. Which I'm, is also I'm a big fan. Also cool. I don't movie. care that it doesn't look like he's on the battlefield ready to charge you. I like it fitting his personality. That this guy's so arrogant that his model is just a diorama on the battlefield. Well, that's the thing. Is like you are coming. You're running up these busted stairs toward him. You know. Yeah. The other thing is, like... Breland brings up a good point that he wouldn't be a proper Mortark if he wasn't 100 points over-costed and uh, kind of kind of flawed even then. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they haven't written a new War Scroll for, for them in a while, so... Yeah. Um, the other thing I did notice is... Uh, is Normally, this is where they, like, talk about our endless spells and uh, and and terrain. There's none of that here. Uh, no, like, I don't think we're getting endless spells, first of all. And terrain pieces, we've got a couple theories. So we've got this, this, this panorama, this, uh, this diorama here. He might have a terrain quality to it himself. Uh, not that he will be terrain. So it might be like, remember when I talked about how, like, I really thought, I really hoped and thought that, like, the black coach would have been a terrain piece and that was kind of a missed opportunity for Night Haunt? Like, maybe they do kind of meld that kind of concept of, like, an attack model with a terrain model here. Could it be that this Mortark is the first one that doesn't cast spells? 
might not. This guy doesn't strike me as much of a spellcaster. I'm he's, sure he probably can. I bet you he's right? got an unbind, because, like, Crowface Man here probably un unbinds. Yeah, like, p perhaps part of his retinue. Yeah. Yeah. Can do things like that. Right. But, like, he doesn't strike me as a spellcaster either. Um, and all the souls they talk about are always, like, warrior souls, not, like, casto souls. And, yeah, the dude with the scythe on foot seems to be, like, could very easily be a spellcaster. Mm-hmm. Everybody else, who knows? This might be like the least magical death army, and they get skull catapults instead, which is like, okay, fair trade. Fair trade, yeah. Playing Teth and you want to play magic, you have plenty of options, right? So here's something new. Right. So I grabbed a couple of, I grabbed a couple of clips from some of the other stuff. So here's Sarcophagus Man, totally separate. Um, this is... Oh, I like Sarcophagus Man. Oh, this is so what a cool. cool head. <laughs> actually is yet that like it reminds me a little bit of the predator actually yeah a little bit of like egyptian egyptian um long-faced predator man yeah yeah and so he's like inside of his own sarcophagus that is busted off because you can kind of see it like tearing from the bed like he rose from the grave he's like nah you know what actually this is pretty comfortable i'm gonna chill <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take it with me and all his like personalities on the the fucking soul face in his chest so, like, this reminds me of, like, Oogie Boogie or some shit like that from uh, uh, Nightmare oh, Before Christmas. the hair? Yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm fucking a fan. But most importantly, this is a literal contract where you sign next to the axe that he's holding out before you. Yeah, we need cords of bone. I assume it's cords, right? Like, they use lumber terminology yeah, for like how much of... bone that yeah. you deliver to the... Yeah. Yeah, so this is like, and he's got like room for one more skull to put on the hook here. Yeah, this isn't even a reach. There's a goddamn X and then a line. Like, this is where you sign. It this is, is a contract. Yeah, so contract man here. Ah, like, this is just telling me you've got some cool rules planned, you know? Um, they talk about the bone tithe and like, will you pay it? Um, so I'm hoping that we get the resource system I was talking about before. I want there to be a, a tithe of bone resource system where, like, when you're murdering people, you're collecting their bones, and you can offer, like, you can like offer contracts for power and like take the bones at the end. Like, that'd be so awesome. Yeah, kind of like the there are a few Slanesh ones like that where it's like you can choose this offering, and if the opponent takes you up on it, you get this thing. Except those are all like you know, completely not tempting at all and a huge failure at making a tempting rule. But um, I like the idea of it and, it, yeah. and it could be cool if this army did it except... Well, even if they don't also, charge... Also, he has a contract uh, shoved through his neck bone. So oh, he's like... Oh, yeah, right there. Now it reminds me of Grim where, Fandango. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps he was a lawyer in life and uh, Mr. Mortark told him where he can put his... His contract. And like he shoved it down his throat and that's what killed him. <laughs> <laughs> you signed it and you choke on it. Um, so he's got room for one more head. He's like a he's a head hunting like he's a head hunter. Uh like awesome. What if you can conscript people from other people's armies? <laughs> like you can like sign them get them to sign on the on the line and like fight with one of their models. That'd be cool. <laughs> um so yeah, I, I grabbed this screenshot out the video. I love the model. Uh, this could also, be a look at look at how daintily those skeleton hands are holding the chain. They're just being very careful. Oh yeah, like they're like that. I think it's a funny touch. Oh, the staff is like a lot of oh yeah. I love the candles. One of them's already snuffed out too, by the way. Best part maybe of this guy, and there are a lot of great parts. Every head is a king. Ooh yeah, yeah you're right. Oh boy, I, I missed that the first time. Man, I love like how this is where your kings will get you. Oh man, this guy's like watching the the training video that you don't get paid for when he signed up for this. You know, like, did you know the average person is hiding an entire skeleton inside their? <laughs> like one entire don't skeleton. Be don't be fooled. They all have a skeleton. Man, I'm gonna be collecting skeletons on the table. It's gonna be great. And then the other, uh, the other one I captured was this one here. Maybe it's like Hangman, where you have, uh, you have like shin, shin, thigh, thigh, chest, arm, arm, head, 
And like once you collect all that, it fills up and it's like a bar. It's like a full skeleton bar, and now you can use it on something. <laughs> so like I'm, now I'm thinking of like video game uh, UIs, but yeah. Okay, we have precedent for like strange mechanics. That's a little yeah. far fetched, but like well, we have a rune system, right? Those are runes, even though you're just spending them. Like you know, yeah. once you collect a full skeleton worth of. So I this have the perfect is... image to send you at last. I've been waiting. Okay, uh, Facebook or, or or Discord. 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 All right. Sometimes you collect so many memes that there's one for every situation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna pull this on over to uh, the stream real quick, so that others can. It's safer know. work. A normal human has about 206 bones. But I have about 4,000 bones. <laughs> nani? Uh, nani? <laughs> nani the fuck? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, and so, like, uh, but here, I, I grabbed, so I grabbed this one here, and not just because it says you will pay Nagash's toll, and I could, like, rub it into people who said this was fucking Cetra's face, uh, because it's not. Uh, go fuck yourself. I want a new stuff. I want a new lore. I want a new world building. I got all of it. So go away. Stop talking. You can, feel free to at me because uh, you know you'll help my algorithms. But I too want a new stuff. Yeah. So I wanted a new stuff. But uh, what? I, why? The reason I capped this isn't for a scope, so I can speculate. These actually look like normal cavalry bases, maybe to me. But then again, if these are fifties. Over here, these might actually be the, the the bigger base, right? Those look like the standard cavalry base size, I think. The Black Knight size, they don't, yeah. I don't think they look like Mortar, uh, like Mornfang bases. But, no, uh, like maybe could be. eel bases are on the standard cavalry base too. I think these are standard. Yeah, and those are a bit small. I think these are standard standard cavalry bases. So I don't get my dream of like of of juggernauts. But look in the background here. Um, and it's out of focus because, of course, it would be. Um, but yeah, look at that terrain. I wonder if it's custom terrain they made for it, or if this is a thing. This, I uh, see. I think it's like a big box you can buy or something. That's what I'm thinking. I, I think we're getting a big box because this face here is the first concept art it, it shows in like the first video. As you see this face right here, and so I think that we're getting a little. I can see like little locking pieces here. I think we're getting like a. Not like a army terrain piece. I think we're getting a like a terrain for the table piece. Um. So like that's my hot take there. I don't think I'm getting army terrain because I think I'm still using grave sites, uh, with this army. And uh, fine, but maybe the grave sites function a little bit differently, and they have like the tithe, the bone tithe mechanic, or who knows, whatever it's going to be. I feel like they can't call it Bone Tithe because there's already Blood Tithe, right? So it's got to be something else. Like Bone Harvest. Well, they've used Tithe so much, right? That in all their ads. And... I guess. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, these guys are on the 50s. These guys are on the... Man, this is going to be awesome. I think I need 40 of these, like, tiny dudes. And, like, 18... <laughs> Of the cavalry dudes, <laughs> two catapults, the mortark, and like, uh, like a, like a, a light, a light, a light, a light salt and peppering of the the forearmed guys. Yeah, a light dusting of the forearmed <laughs> yeah, guys. Just, still, just don't need to go too heavy handed on them because this army doesn't have flying. Uh, I think we're gonna play the game pretty fair and straightforward, but we might have like absurd resilience and damage. But like, no. Well, you'll go four handed, but you won't go heavy handed. Right, right. I mean, the whole point of going forehanded is to is to lighten the touch, right? You have more control. Um, so yeah, that's all my photos. Got the the book cover. Uh, they didn't go with a symmetrical book cover, so good on them. But I question going with this gentleman here. I I kind of that front row looks completely awesome. The front row looks way cooler than the centerpiece, doesn't it? Now I'm running out of things to talk about, but like. This front row looks completely awesome. You can see like the seams in the arm, in in the skull where it's like uh, where it's like put together. Like the facial expressions are all like kind of different and malicious. Uh, but this guy here, the way he's he remind it looks like a Carnifex, like right here specifically. 
and I'm, I'm yeah, a little bit. Well, yeah. well, yeah. I don't. I'm not upset that they used him. I just wish, like, I almost would have rather had like a the lunging, like cavalry man. But maybe that's because it I, just I, shows I, the catapult, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, just the catapult, and like nothing else. It's just like an empty field and just the catapult. So here it's it like is. just the dude's con piece. <laughs> <laughs> that we have now achieved best version uh yeah yeah it's uh it's just his cod piece um like it has a separate uh it's got a separate unit his unit has a separate unit yeah it's a like it's a separate unit and that's the joke yeah catacross like it has its own war scroll <laughs> it has its own war scroll it counts as a separate unit mm. So you have two scoring units. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's fighting a keeper of secrets, <laughs> and like he outscores it because he has a separate unit. And Slanash is like just like in the in the like in in Ulkish notes. Just like taking notes. <laughs> taking notes and like fanning itself, just like brilliant. <laughs> Why didn't I think of this? <laughs> um. Yeah. So Catacros, and then uh. And then our our pre order date is October twenty nineteen, so I actually might barely have enough time, uh, <laughs> to like get Molly on my side to dump a lot of money on an army suddenly. <laughs> I can't wait for this, man. October's my favorite month, and it just got better. It's it's, uh, man, this has been a good year. This has been a good year for Mephisto. <laughs> Um, so yeah, any, any thoughts, anything to, anything to add? Finally a death army that I would play. Really? Because yeah. the dudes are big and elite and I'm not about moving a hundred dudes around. So they did it. Uh, Night Hunt looks cool. You know, LON was cool too, mm -hmm. but here's all they had to do was make it elite and make everything look fucking amazing. And, uh, yeah, looks, looks great. Big fan. Cool. Uh, I'm obviously during the, during the QA, they accidentally let slip that, well, not let slip like everyone knew, but there have been a lot of things that quote everyone knew that didn't happen for four years. So, you know, let's, let's be clear. But, uh, yeah, they confirmed Ma tribes is, they, they confirmed the cities of Sigmar and orc war clans are next. And Maw Tribes and Bone Men are coming out at the same time. So we're going to get our box. The dream is real, right? Yeah, surely there'll be a dual box between these guys. And the thing I've been telling people in videos for like a year, which is, oh, here's another Soul Wars box, or here's another, you know, Corn vs. Stormcast. And this is great because you and your buddy are like, hey, I want to play Stormcast. Oh, cool, I want to play Corn. We'll buy this box and we'll split it. I haven't had that experience and I've been yet. Talking about that, and I've never had that experience, and here we are with. Here we are with Bone Daddy Death, and uh, Ma Tribes. Uh, yep. Evening. Yep. Already buying this. Evening, Mega. Thanks for the follow there. Um, we're just we're just uh, gushing. Uh, unabashedly and unapologetically about about this army and we were, we you actually just kind of caught us on the tail end here where we started talking a little bit about ogres um yeah so in summary you can you can watch the vod and we made funny jokes and stuff but in summary looks sweet <laughs> that's about that's the full encompassing of it yeah that's sweet dude yeah that'd be hey well on the other end uh i i I may know. I may. I'm connected. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's Haywell on the other side there. Um, uh, he does very calculated, thoughtful, and intelligent content for YouTube, and I just uh, yell into a microphone for one hour with no script. So we have very different both styles. Are <laughs> yeah. yeah, both are important parts. <laughs> parts of the content. I felt like this was the the most apt way to use my particular skill though is like they just teased it to, or they just showed this stuff today and like i've been uh, it's been three ghbs worth worth of age of sigmar for me personally and like uh getting back into age of sigmar is like excited about picking up where i left off with with legions of nagash 
because I used to play uh, quote unquote uh, Army Book Undead back in Warhammer Fantasy Battle, and then I played Vampire Counts because TK didn't was just delayed for its launch, and then I didn't play for a while. I played 40k for a little bit, and, I, and then I just huge hiatus. And uh, Haywell comes up to me and he's like, "You should play Age of Sigmar. It's good now, you know." And so like I had that that brief moment where I'm like. I'm like, okay, what army should I play? Uh, you know, maybe I'll play Stormcast Eternals, because, like, uh, you know, it's just, like, there. Or maybe I'll play Skaven, because I thought about playing Skaven back in, in Warhammer well, Fantasy Pal Battle. Paladins are cool. Like, oh, yeah, Space Paladins are sweet, man. Paladins are cool, and these are these are fantasy Space Paladins, right? Yeah. From 1950 World's, World's Fair version of, of land, and that's cool. Yeah, and, and you know that that's kind of cool. Skaven because their big models look the coolest. Just about like storm fiends are so sick and um, fucking yeah. vermin lords are so sweet. Like man, if every Skaven just looked like a vermin lord. Yeah, and then and then um and then like it was like who the fuck are we kidding? I'm gonna play death again. So, uh, like, starting to get into death. Now, LON hadn't yet come out. It came out very shortly after I committed to to playing death. And it was like Games Workshop had personally, like, patted me on the back and said, like, good choice, bro. Uh, so for, like, for, like, a year and a half, I felt like I had, like, the... I had, like, just the pick of destiny from Tenacious D or something like that going on. Where it's like, here you go, you get to play your thing. Um, and I've got that... But, like, again, I never got, like, the new release hype. So, Night Haunt came out. I was like, oh, yeah, cool for people who like spooky boys. Like, awesome. Like, I'm happy for you. And I felt that way about a lot of armies as they were coming out. Um, where it's like, you know, IDK came out. And uh, we did a pretty in-depth take on your show about IDK. Um, the show that no one should ever go watch, right? <laughs> um, yeah, we were, like, wrong about everything, too. Well, not everything, but... Yeah, we were pretty... Well, we were doing we the... Thought, the... Dude, we thought Eidolon of the Sea would be good. Look at its war scroll. It looks good. But that was before then, points. Like, and then you think about it and look at its points for one. And then you're like, oh, oh no. Yeah. 400s? Yeah. In the 400s? Oh no. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, sometimes... Sometimes, like, doing a reaction show when you first see things spoiled and then, like points come out and you can look at it a little more in depth and you're like oh geez should yeah. i do reaction shows anymore uh, i'm supposed to be the thoughtful comment content so maybe i'll give her a month yeah um and, and it wasn't just that it was like um i think we were going in, in into it trying to be positive just you know for the yeah, sake it just of didn't it just didn't fit yeah like, there's so many people being so overly positive and even forced positive that i'm like it's just not me. I'd rather be honest. Yeah, yeah, and um, uh, that's why this is called the unabashed stream because I'm just I am unabashed. I am unapologetic. Yeah, for once we are just all positive, but it's because it looks fucking sick. Yeah, I'll get rules and like we've said a couple times. Like I hope this isn't low tan. I hope this isn't low tan, right? Because yeah. we've learned our lesson. But like again, so it's like you just had like a year of releases or two year, you know, a year and a half of releases in my case, where I'm just like. I'm like, oh, I'm excited for the players who are into that. I'm excited for the players who are into that. And, like, and I took that stance very strongly where you'd see apparently people on Facebook right now are upset about this, this army. They don't think it looks wow. good. I don't know, but they can suck Catacross's massive cod piece. They're fucking wrong. Uh, go fuck yourself. It's going to take them half a weekend to get it off. <laughs> That's what she said. They'll need, they'll need two or three strong men. <laughs> young backs to pull that thing off. right right <laughs> right and it, that has some heft to it yeah i mean there's some there's some mighty girth there uh, <laughs> there's girth uh so like yeah i, I mean and, and finally like i'm due up i wonder if his movement is is penalized is penalized for that no pun intended <laughs> whoa real and um do you have a question about matt is it fine if i do a do a tangent and explain the magic situation. Let, or... let me finish this take real quick, and then you do the magic. Uh, but basically, uh, I'm fine. Like I, I'm, I'm due up for my thing that I'm excited about. Finally, and uh, first off, people shitting on it. Cod piece. See that take. Rewind it. Play it back again, and then play it a third time in slow motion. Uh, and it feels really good. And I wonder if this is how other people felt throughout the year. And then if people were shitting on them. 
I just, um, wow, like, don't be shitty to people who are excited about models and getting an army that they've been, like, maybe not looking forward to, but, like, perfectly resonated with them. And if you're maybe just a tiny plus, bit patient... it's aesthetic anyway, right? Like, yeah. there's there's shitting on something that actually sucks, and that's probably more data, right? But yeah, as far as aesthetics, it's like, you know, it's pretty... Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you can one way or another. Obviously, there's stuff that aesthetically is is just like fucking trash, and it's it's hard not to say that. But yeah, yeah. And I, I and this is my and this is the thing I like though. Like I'm I'm all about the skeletons, and I just got like like the skeletons just found the secret of the ooze from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and like injected it, and now they're all like super shredder skeletons. Like I'm so about this. You have no idea. This is this is like my jam. Um. And then Meganosh, I was not there. I'm just fucking precognitive when it comes to releases, apparently. I'm really good at predicting shit somehow. I don't know how I do it. I don't have, like, an inside man. I just, like, I just, like, see the... I'm just good at, like, you know, putting my finger to the wind and see what's coming and, and piecing together what we do know. I have no idea. Like, I made my, like, this guy looks like he's on a Xerxes platform take and, like, cool uh <laughs> you know so awesome but yeah um real quick we're gonna take a, a detour into magic uh which is handy because you can talk about magic and i go to i can go to the bathroom so that's hey right so yeah so i was at the old school event instead of nashcon yes. instead of nashcon yeah instead of nashcon uh i had i had the trip planned a long time ago uh but yeah i was at i was at the old school event I did pretty well in it. However, a certain man, uh, Weissman, did really, really well in that he won. Uh, no on the bubble, you know, 10th place for him. He got first place. And you might recognize his name, although really probably not, but you'll pretend to after I mention it. He is the guy who is credited with inventing the deck, as in capital T, capital D a.k.a. Keeper, a.k.a. Old School Five Color Control, from way back in the day. And he got first place. And everyone's like, oh, isn't that nice? That's just cool. You know, the guy who invents the deck, now they have this old school stuff, and he brings it, and he gets first place. Like, how nice. And, you know, it wraps it up like a nice little pack. Um, but we're no longer talking about the Mortark here. Well, as it happens... For old school events, they're pretty, they're kind of casual, and they want to show off their their cool old cards. So instead of deck lists, they take pictures of their deck laid out on the mat, and that serves as their deck list. Like the judges take pictures of. It. So it's you know primed and ready for uh, social media and all the rest. Well, people also take pictures of board states. Like, this is the guy casting Mana Drain, and this is the guy cracking his Black Lotus and tapping a Mox on turn one to, you know, accelerate out some dumpy-ass rare, right? <laughs> Creature. Well, he's got a circle of protection red in his... He's got one circle of protection red in his sideboard, in the decklist photo. And in the, like, whatever round... One of the later rounds... He's got uh, two circle protection reds on the battlefield. Oh, very interesting. Well, this is not okay. And although there wasn't photographic evidence of the second one from people I talked to at the tournament, miraculously there was a second Bizarre Baghdad on the battlefield at some point as well. And he only had one. So this is like clear, clear photographic cheating. No, no two ways around it. Uh, his his tweets that he, he put out some tweets to like try to explain himself but it was like embar it was like embarrassing it's like no no i don't i don't think so <laughs> i don't think so dude. and so he uh so what they did was they're like you're returning the trophy you're returning the prize you're not the champion and they called the entire top eight back, including ninth place, who now got the eighth place seed. 
and they redid the entire top eight just without the guy and crowned the real winner. Like they caught on that fast and they were able to resolve it in that way. Which was actually pretty cool. Um, I recall that uh, Weissman also had a tweet where he's like, I'm giving the prizes back and I'm getting the trophy back because I want the the winner of this not to be tainted, you know. Uh, which he tweeted out suspiciously like after the, they told him to do that. Mm. Uh, so like making it seem like it was his choice, it definitely was not. Like it was an accident. And like I said, his his explanation of of why his sideboard miraculously changed in between rounds with photographic evidence uh, was like laughably bad. It was just like, nah, you <laughs> you definitely ch you straight up cheated, and this is a pathetic excuse. And now I believe his Twitter is just locked; like you can't even tweet at him anymore. Hmm. And um, you know, the inventor of uh, the deck and keeper in five color control from way 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 back in the day. Well. Turns out uh, he wanted the win just a little too bad, and now his legacy is completely destroyed. So you were like, you were in the like, basically like a front row seat for like drama, massive drama. Yeah, for drama, for massive drama. But it was drama that was like immediately resolved and caught pretty quickly. Yeah, caught with photos. Plus, um, there weren't photos of the other thing, but that happened too. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the stuff was returned, like, that day. And then they called the entire top eight back, plus ninth place, who got the eighth place seed. And they did an entire new top eight. So, and then they crowned, a, you know, a proper champion, a big boy champion. <laughs> a champion who at least provably did not cheat, right? So... So good on them. It was a sweet event, as with all old school events, they're always awesome. But uh, yeah, that's my little diversion. Back to AOS. So you you had one guy kind of like, I mean, it was just one guy though, right? Like it wasn't. Yeah. Just teaming with. He assholes. just happened to win. But old school events, truly, like besides this one guy, uh, old school events, I have found tend to be the most like Age of Sigmar tournaments as far as like the chillness and just the happy to be here and happy to be playing with my cool old cards it, the community is. It's because they live in the realm of nostalgia and I think there's yeah. I think there's a like a prominence of nostalgia in Age of Sigmar. Um for whatever it's it's weird because like the people who love Warhammer Fantasy Battle uh, so much so that they refused to play the new thing. Were sort of jettisoned from the community. Um, I heard a, I heard a pretty cool story. Look at that. See, you didn't need to like do the abrupt segue. I had your segue for you, dude. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, the uh, uh, what, what I heard from one of the stories of like uh, essentially someone who was playing Warhammer Fantasy Battle and then the transition into Age of Sigmar, even during the Dark Ages when it was bad, was like. A lot of them were just like, "Ah, oh, this is the new thing. I guess we'll stick with it." Like there was almost like a, <laughs> like a sort of, like just a cold acceptance from them or something, or just like a, a passive acceptance. And then you just had like the really angry people who resist change are the ones that just like kind of like fled or got kicked out the community. And so whatever for whatever reason you have that well, you backbone. Know, the, the famous like the famous video of the dude burning his high elf army. Um, even though it was probably just Twitch acting, you know, for, for views on YouTube. Of course. Yeah. And, you know, creating Ninth Age. Creating Ninth Age wasn't even, like, the worst idea. It's like care. old. It's like the old school of Age of Sigmar. Like, you want to play with your old stuff with the old rules? Yeah. Perfectly fine. You want to play Mario 3 on Nintendo? Yeah. Perfectly fine. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing. The difference it's is... Just, it's just the community kind of had a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. Yes. I don't know if they still do because I don't... Maybe not. them at all, but... That kind of soured it. That kind of ruined it for me. Right, and and that's like it's not. It's not like Mario Three Speedrunners shit on Mario Odyssey. Right? New Mario, that's right? Like, yeah, yeah. They don't. They don't care. That and that's the thing is like you have to accept. Like I run third edition Dungeons and Dragons games sometime. Uh I, I'm an asshole. If I then 
bash people who are playing fifth ed and then like make long public posts about how I think Wizards of the Coast should make a new module for third third edition, right? I'm being unreasonable in that situation. Yeah. That is unreasonable. I might think three like third edition is the best D and D has ever been, and want to keep playing those games or AD and D or whatever your 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 stick is. But I am the unreasonable one if I shit on the new thing and shit on the people for liking the new thing. That makes me unreasonable. Like I didn't like fourth edition when it came out. I just didn't like it, so I didn't play it. Um, that's it. You know, like kind of stop there. Like, yeah, I'd take pot shots at it at it occasionally, but I didn't go and yeah, make. I didn't, I didn't like fourth edition, and I didn't play it, and that was it. I'm like, oh, I hope the next edition's good, and then next edition came out. Hey, it's good. Good, <laughs> right? Like, there you go. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's just like you have a lot of different twitters, and so Nash on Patreon, and Josh Arden on Twitter, and Joshua Arden. Yeah. Yeah, uh, just at me on Condense that brand. At me on Twitter so I can at least give you a follow on YouTube and and uh, yeah, yeah, and, and Twitter. Um, you seem pretty pretty so together. I, I say condense that brand, and I've been trying to do that, and actually it's really hard. Some of the platforms will not let you change. Oh yeah, or you got your name on these two, and you don't got it on this one. So I understand. Like sometimes that can suck. Yeah, I don't know how to change my website's name to be inclusive of anything. Um, so it's just like winsomnia.com and I'm like, how do I make this like the Omni nerd site? Right. So, Oh, real. And as far as how I did in the tournament, there were two tournaments. I didn't enter the first cause I was Las Vegas too hard. And the second one, I got 10th place. Woo! Definitely of... could have gotten top eight. Had I sideboarded better in the last round. But, uh, you know, it was a mistake, and uh, the old-school metagame is weird, and I don't know too much about the old-school metagame. I know much more now. You're a little out of practice, too. So, like, to show up just randomly and go top 10 is pretty solid, I think. Like, I I showed rank... It was a hell of a lot of fun, though. Like, the decks you make, there there's more of an old-school metagame. There's more diversity than you might think. Uh, there's some pretty interesting decks there. This isn't a magic stream, the but... Long story short, I played Channel Fireball, Ponza, and um, what, what's Ponza? I think a lot of people have an idea of what Channel uh, Fireball is. What's Ponza? Ponza is land destruction. Okay, so your land it's destruction. Green, white, it's it's green, white, red, green, white, red land destruction. So like four strip mines, some ice storms, uh, you know, stone rain in the side. So like uh, and. White for all the good white cards plus disenchant's main as a four of because disenchant is land destruction since everyone runs five moxes, mm -hmm. not to mention soaring. And you know, balance is absurd, and sorts of plowshares is good, and you know, all the rest. Um, right, green's good for regrowth, uh, for Sylvan Library main as uh, as your card draw in what in various ways. And channel fireball and a bunch of burn plus some forks because I can't cast ancestral recall because I don't have blue but I'll cast yours or I'll or I'll fork your uh, you know mind twist for six on turn two or whatever so yeah it's a lot of fun and in round five I lived the dream it happened round five game two I lost game one I'm on the play. Don't even maul, keep my seven, and it's Black Lotus, Mox Ruby, Tega, Channel, Fireball for 21, game. Yo! It happened. It happened turn one, didn't even maul, on the play, you're dead. So I just imagine... <laughs> so so I, di I did it in a real tournament, it really happened. I, I imagine your opponent just, like, threw up a fucking, like, get these hands, just like one, one like a high five up in the air already waiting for you as he died. I like put my. Or was he on... mad? <laughs> no, he wasn't. Okay. He's like, I can't believe this is this really happened in real time to me. Like, yeah. And uh, he's like, so I'm I'm like I put Mox and Black Lotus and land, and I'm like channel, and then I put down Fireball, and he's like, so I just lose. I'm like, yeah, you just lose. <laughs> and he's like, but do you have enough life to pay? Yes. Yes, I pay 19. 
and we have two mana left over, so you take 22. <laughs> All right, well, game three. Uh, while you're shuffling up, let me go to the bar, because there's always a bar on premises for old school It's events. in the bylaws that there must yeah, it's be. In the bylaws. It's not a proper Eternal Central old school event unless there's a bar on the premises that mixes and serves the drinks. You can't just bring them in. Right. Uh, that doesn't count, apparently. That's funny. I love that. I love it. It is the most Age of Sigmar of the magic formats. I used to think it was EDH, but EDH gets real chippy. Like, they get real... Yeah, competitive EDH is... Cancer. It can be cancer. Kind of like... Well, it's forgotten the face of its father. Like, it doesn't... The whole format is on purpose made explicitly to be a casual multiplayer format. And then, like, they have tournaments for it that tend to get pretty low turnouts because either there's people that are grinding just trying to get hmm. Chuck E. Cheese dollars side event at a, at a GP or something, mm -hmm. and then there's a bunch of people playing casual commander because they're like, why would I pay to play commander when I can find three other people for a pot over here for free and the decks they're using exactly. don't win turn one. Like, exactly. Yeah, how about well, that? Uh, exactly, exactly. I keep my three, I keep three AD, EDH decks tuned basically to just play pickup games. And if I happen to be playing a pickup game with the, with the, that guy, uh, then Atraxa comes out and you lose in the least interactive way possible while I tell you, you can't play the game because, and I don't care if I lose in the, in like the group of three or four. My whole point is that the guy who decided he was going to build the deck with no fun allowed for other people at the table is not allowed to have fun. And I get my fun now because I get to decide that you don't win. And that's way more fun to me because clearly that's all you care about. And then yeah, I've been in commander pods where like the one guy shows up with, um, I can't remember what that druid is. You tap it and mill yourself until you hit a basic land. And so you don't have any, and you mill your whole deck and win right away. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what the druid is called. I'm in age of Sigmar mode. And so I'm starting to forget the 20,000 cards. Like, um, you know, there's the, at the local store, like, sometimes you'll get that guy in your group, and he's like, okay, so I win turn two. Hermit Druid, that's it, thank you. He's like, all right, so I win turn two, and we're like, okay, cool, we'll just finish our game, though. But you won. You got us. <laughs> and then just, like, play the rest of the Commander game out for the next, like, half an hour or so. Yeah, um, like, I, so I, I do like the, the casual EDH stuff, but, uh. I don't know, the tournaments. I, I played in, like, a pot a couple of times. Uh, speaking of, Ian O'Brien. Oh, well, mm -hmm. uh, I was going to say. Oh, Jim, Jim Brewer's, bro. It's not full beta. The uh, the Chaos the chaos Orb is uh, Collector's Edition. But it's a special collector's, collector's Edition that was given to me for free by Jason Jaco, the, uh, the uh, owner of Eternal Central website that kind of started old school ball rolling in America, at least there's european old school and there's american chicago old school and i went to eternal Sun i went to um eternal weekend like a few years ago and went out drinking with these guys and jaco was like talking to me about old school and i'm like this is the greatest format ever and he was selling me on it and i'm like all right i'm in i'm gonna do this and he's like you live because i lived in chicago at the time so did he and he's like all right, we do regular events, though, and if you promise you'll play this, I'm giving you a Chaos Orb Collector's Edition for free, cool. but I'm going to draw all over it right now and sign it with a Sharpie. And I'm like, let's go. And so he, he wrote on the card, he wrote, To my brother Joe, keep calm, and he spelled calm wrong with a K because he was six whiskey sours into the night <laughs> and destroy everything and then, like, signed it. And so that's the one I use. So sorry for the tangent, but there you go. No, no, that's good. Um, what I was, uh, where I, what I was gonna, what I, what I was gonna say is that um, the uh, uh, Ian o, uh, Ian O'Brien, uh, Ian O'B, as you might know him from just uh, from a just uh, just Cyan podcast. Uh, he's uh, he runs his most successful event at his at his store is uh, uh, EDH, and what he does is he does a penalty if you win before turn seven. So if you play a shit deck, um, you know, like uh, miss it, you've forgotten the face of your father deck. You actually it it ends up to be you you can't win the tournament, and so you you kind of like have to play a little fair, 
oh so game theory the people who are trying to build the strongest deck are ones where they set up the perfect win by turn seven but no sooner like right that kind of thing Me. well you play real decks and then inevitably that gives other people a chance to randomly fuck with you exactly the game, just lasts, the game just lasts long enough for you know mom and pop thopter shop you're playing against to just randomly have like a mono drain and and, and blow you out yeah or a thought seize or a you know uh what is it black neogen and just have you discard your hand or something just random shit that happens in commander right Right, so he just um like so he he just put puts that into his tournaments and he's like it's great it's awesome it's all the things you like about AOS but uh you know in Magic which you also like but Magic yeah he's like well that's how I run my uh and, Magic and tournaments cards that, and uh, cards that all these old dudes bought a million years ago that are now unreasonably expensive. And people are like, whoa, you must be really rich. No, I mean, most of the old school community bought their cards when they were like 20 bucks each. Right, right. And they've just had them like for a billion years. Right. Um, so there's an entry, to, uh, a barrier to entry there. No, so like this is a good time there to get less the... of a barrier to entry and they're reducing it more and more. Uh, By a long your, proxy, your though, though. are a little more sticklers about it. Like, there was actually big arguments in the European old school community as to whether or not revised would be banned or not. So it's just ABU and uh, Chicago old school is uh, collector's edition, fully legal international edition, fully legal. Um, and recently, I think this year they just said that as long as it uses the original artwork, it's fine. You can even use new face cards. So it's, um, you know, there's ways to get into it. That aren't that bad, and there's plenty of decks that don't have power that are actually pretty, pretty sick. Right. Mono black and white weenie are both real decks, well, uh, and they and they don't use any power. Really. So, so mono black, you just said my jam. By the way, old school Suey black was like one of my fucking favorite things ever. That well, that's how I got it. Empires, you can use fallen empires because it was printed in '94. So like, him to Turok is in the format, you know, and hell yeah, just in calls and racks and and black vices. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, that's uh, is uh, is the uh, is the knight my man in? Oh yeah, hippie. Oh, yeah, hippie. Nice. Yeah, Dark Ritual hippie turn one. It's oh, still it's still. A thing. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's my jam. That's my shit. Like <laughs> Suey black, like fucking mono black, like Suey deck. Like yo, let's go. Um, that's actually how I got into into Magic the Gathering was a Suey black deck. I didn't know that's what it was, but that's what I, I did. Is just like. Uh, tried to win fast with with a value that I got by giving up my life. Um, yeah, I had a zombie bidding deck in standard. Uh, that's where I won my most prestigious tournament was with a uh, it was like a fifty or forty person tournament in college at uh, the old Fountain of Youth in in Eau Claire. That was right around the time Joe that you started playing Magic. I I was doing this. Mm -hmm. I I had taken. I had just stolen exactly Kenny's uh, zombie bidding deck, <laughs> and then I took it to Fountain of Youth. I remember that one, Patriarch's bidding. Yeah, 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 so I had the zombie bidding deck. Anyway, anyway, so yeah, off the subject of magic, I want to go back to this uh, question we have here. Um, uh, Mega asks... Oh, yeah, about Warcry. I you just guys... had someone on Patreon ask about Warcry, but unfortunately, I haven't gotten to play it yet, and so I can't, I can't form any sort of opinion about it. I've talked to people who've played it, I've looked at the rules and stuff, but having not played it myself, I just can't answer the question on the show or anything. Well, you've already said it wrong because it's Warcry. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to tie it. You've got to uh, tie Topford it. Um, my energy is on cooldown right now, so I'm gonna have to take a rain check. On, right on, right on. On that, on that. You see that? Look, that's I just, I just finished being actually hype about a Death Army for once ever. <laughs> So we're on cooldown. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, out of energy. I get it. No. Um. So Warcry. Uh. My thoughts are. Uh. I was asked to be on Warhammer Weekly, <laughs> to talk about the meta, and Vince, <laughs> Vince Venturella sprang asking me questions about Warcry on me, kind of like at the last minute, and I had only read, the, uh, not even the like the official Games Workshop shit. The someone taking a picture of the rules of Warcry shit, like that sort of pre-teaser stuff. And I logged it in as like, oh, this looks interesting. I hope it's, uh, I, I hope it's like, uh, like Kill Team, 
in that it's a, a gateway drug into the, the the greater game where you can just buy like two boxes of models and you can start playing Age of Sigmar and learning the rules and stuff and and I liked I like that. Um, and I looked at it and I said Seems like they figured it out. Cool, and that's as much as I did. And now it has been like three months. I uh, still haven't read a single thing since. <laughs> <laughs> so there's there's my take no my take is uh i'm gonna borrow knowledge for this one uh because uh people like ty and domus uh, other community community figureheads uh they've given it their stamp of approval and if they've given it their stamp of approval um i don't always see eye to eye on certain things with with some community members but i trust their opinions and if your idea is to play a better than skirmish small style game fucking go to town uh Beyond that, I think it's a great excuse to explore some other army aesthetics that you want a hobby, but you don't want to fully commit to. Like, for instance, me, I am not really a destruction player. Uh, I'm... Cue the, cue the fucking metal music. Uh, I'm a death player. Uh, but, like, there are things out there that, like, I think fucking boingy boys uh, in in, in uh, Gloomspike gets just look awesome. I think Cave Shaman just looks fucking awesome. And, like, I could not play 80 of those models as awesome as i think they look because it's just not in me but i could play like 10 of them and so that's where i think uh I, that's where i come down on Warcry. i think uh if you can find time you can find the community because that's always the the big big challenge for these non age of sigmar games that they keep coming out with um shade spire things like that is finding time to when you have time to play a game do you want to play Age of Sigmar or not Age of Sigmar, right? Um, me, I want to get my Age of Sigmar reps in. So I just don't play the other stuff. It's not because they're not good. It's because when I have two hours to spare and a friend to play with, I'm going to play Age of Sigmar. I'm going to refine my list. I'm going to do my list science. Uh, yeah, and if you're ever going to like go over to somebody's house or go to the store or something, you're just going to have two hours. At least if you're an adult. like I don't... I don't see when I would play Warcry because it's like, you can play it in half an hour. And I'm like, yeah, but if I have a half an hour and I got out of the house and I made plans to go do this, I'm going to have two hours anyway. Yeah. That's not to say I'm not interested in Warcry. It looks sweet. I don't not like it at all. Like, it, it looks cool. I like skirmish. St I like the idea of skirmish style uh, fantasy stuff. I happen not to have played it so far, but it's not because I don't like it. Like, it's not meeting engagements Yeah, for me. It's just like cool, but I haven't done it yet. That's all. Yeah, and and I I like the a sign of things to come. Alternating activations. Well, the you know what's old is new. We used to have a lot of alternating activations in Age of Sigmar. I've softened my opinions on alternating activations. Um, as long as everybody has sweet shit, it's fine. But when it came out, it was sort of like two people had sweet shit. You know. It, yeah. As long as they keep re releasing stuff with enough options and enough power to be able to deal with it in some ways across the whole game and then pinpoint the random armies that don't and be like, is this because they're good elsewhere or because they're too old or whatever? Like, there are worlds where strikes first and last are perfectly fine and it's a world where everything is more legacy power and less standard power. Right, right. And if that's where we're slowly limping towards, then fine. Right. If that's the new power level fine as long as everyone gets on that level um mega kind of continuing what you're saying here this you you say it kind of excellently is trying to use warcry to rope non-gamer friends in um i think that's where warcry sits i think it's a nice format for getting i don't want to say non-gamer friends because my non-gamer friends when i begin to explain age of sigmar i always kind of start with the it's like chess except everything's different you know uh you're moving in three dimensions instead of like linear uh, and I try to like begin to explain it that way, or I if they've played Hero Quest, awesome, because then I can explain it better. Um, but like I think it's a gateway drug. That's where I I think Warcry is a gateway drug, and not necessarily for the like total non gamer because you have other barriers to get the total non gamer to even play at all. Um, and as far as like teaching someone to play Age of Sigmar, that's not the same thing. Like if I'm gonna teach my kid, I have two I have two kids. If I'm gonna teach them Age of Sigmar. I'm going to do exactly what I did a few weeks ago, and there's a fucking photo on Facebook or on Twitter somewhere where uh, my son 
came up to me and he's like, I want to play Age of Sigmar like how you do, but with my Legos. And I, I taught him a basic game about rolling to hit and rolling to defend and rolling and, and, and moving towards stuff. And like I said, like, if you get close, I'm like, you get to move one piece and she gets to move one piece a turn. So you're going to move your piece and she's going to move your piece and you can move your piece anywhere because I don't care about measurement yet. Um, but if you move it close enough to two of her pieces, both of her pieces get to attack you. And so it was just like, just teaching him basics, right? Uh, and I said, like, pick one of your person, they're special. They get two dice every time you roll instead of, instead of just one. So just a real basic, and that's what you're going to do if you're teaching someone the game. You're going to give them two squads and you're going to set up on a table, which is why I don't buy the meeting engagements is a way to teach people to play the game because you're not playing the game the normal fucking way. Uh, so stop with that take. I don't want to, I don't hate meeting engagements. Just stop with that take. You're lying. That's not what it's for. It's to have a different competitive format for 1000 points. That's what it's for. So stop with the other take because it's probably meant as like a 1k that was balanced. Sure. And, and different. Cause like 1k is not one, 1k is very much not a balanced, uh, points value to be at in age of Sigmar. But the meeting engagements is like just as imbalanced in a whole bunch of different ways. So it just seemed to me as kind of a, I don't know if kind of uh, kind of a flop. But you know, I'm not I'm not here to to shit on meeting engagements too hard. No, I'm I'm and I'm not going to shit on it at all. Um, I'm you know, uh, Spawn. Uh, welcome to the welcome to the stream, by the way. Uh, I feel like this one might have the winged hussar thing going on here still, but it's kind of blocked a little bit. Um. But like you're you're right. I was thinking we get a little bit more winged hussar action going on here. We maybe here. Um uh I was thinking like definite like sort of like Persian or Tibetan uh versus like Mongolia because that's what Ogors are. Uh I uh I might have been a little bit wrong about that but in a good way because it's just unique sweet looking shit. Like they have their own aesthetic and I love it. And their aesthetic is the more gassed aesthetic, if I'm going to fucking call it. They didn't go with generic Asian or, like, maximized put together. Uh, no, there's still, a, like, a very definitive, like, terracotta, uh, like, somewhere between, like, terracotta China warrior and, like, Japan. Like, look at this. This, this here is, like... Right, this one's very Chinese. This is like Dynasty Warriors, like, like Lu Bu and and shit. Like, um, well, this this guy's more Lu Bu back here. Uh, so this is like very Dynasty Warriors to me. So this is like Super China. Uh, but then down here we get to the Mortark himself, uh, uh, Orpheon Codpiece, and uh, this is a goddamn samurai. And don't tell me otherwise, right? <laughs> so, um. This is this is this is a samurai and you can't you can't convince me it's not. <laughs> like he's even got the like he's got the katana and the wakazashi like you know the paired swords. He's got the like the one off to the side, the hand on the hilt. He's even got the disapproving chin which you can't quite make out here, which is a, a total a total Japanese uh trope, right? Is the disapproving chin. Look at that. Look at that chin that disapproves of you. So good. Um The real loss is that it's not a skeleton rhino. You know what? I don't. I'm not consider. I'm choosing to look on the positive side here. If the rules suck, then I'm gonna like lose a lot of my positivity. It's a it's a skeleton double double unicorn, is what it is. So we've got a double unicorn, and that's pretty sweet. But I like this Griff Charger back here. I think that's that's awesome. So I'm just happy they're not regular ass horses. Okay. Um, there's a, this thing's got a fucking skull for a shoulder. How awesome is that? Like, I just need to be listening to, to Dio right now. Just like, holy diver, you know, just like fucking going to town. I'm so pleased with this. These, like, when you get on your tiger to drive into hell and fight hell, this is what you fight. It's awesome. I'm so pleased. I love the aesthetic. Necrop necropolis stalkers that is it you mean double more ghasts most ghasts <laughs> uh now we're just rehashing what i said earlier when you when you guys didn't come into the stream but but like one of these things is not like the other 
There's one who has actually figured out how to use four arms, and two who have not. Uh, and this bottom one has figured it out. He's got the like I want I want a two handed sword, but I want to dual wield them. And he's just like, what if I have four arms? You're tenting your pants so hard right now. I'm telling you, I'm not gonna like like I'm not going to not have an erection for the next like full calendar year. As I th anytime just like I think about this, it's the ultimate like Viagra is thinking about this army. And then the bone zone gets a double entendre meaning. So I'm I I, I think it, I'm happy with the aesthetic. Yeah, like they can last super long. You just have to call a doctor so he can be like sweet dude. <laughs> sweet dude. The commercials tell me anyway. Right. They said call a doctor so you can high five over the phone. You know what? Stop with logic, dude. I feel like he's just gonna chop him up, and he's just gonna rotate. So it's fine. I because what he should be doing is instead of dual wielding him like this, he should have like the top two and the bottom two, right? Is how he should be wielding them. And I imagine that he does switch them over when it matters. Uh, but for now, he's he's posturing. So. <laughs> I'm not even going to read that. Um, <laughs> needs two wastes to pivot. It needs two wastes. Well, like, look at this. I think he can, so. I think, I think he can pivot right here and then right here. So he'll be able to, like, murder. Maybe those little arms down there are reticulating, so like the shoulder portion of them moves back really. Oh yeah. oh yeah. Like around around his back, and then he could then he could swing. Yeah, they're like more like spider limbs, so they can like come up and around, right? <laughs> He's got a mid sternum pivot. Um, yeah, I'm 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 for the aesthetic. Um, I'm worried that this guy is like, if they make him a melee foot assassin, they have just. <sighs> He so does not look like a melee. Player. He should be a spellcaster. This he's got even he's got yeah. runes in his glaive here. Like he he should be a. He's yeah. pulling souls out of a scythe that he probably caught someone with and captured their soul, and then he's putting them into his little Ghostbuster vial. Yeah. To be used. Oh, that's the sippy cup. That's your death sippy cup. And so he's giving the death units a little a little sip. Oh, so, so he's on reroll failed wounds and stuff. Yeah, he's the um. So he's the like he's gonna be your like regen point. He's gonna help you refill wounds and stuff because he like takes yeah. souls and cool. I'm for it. Um, Vince also it wasn't Vince who mentioned this to me, um, but one of the one of the folks on Twitter mentioned that uh, that this guy here, uh, the Mortark uh, codpiece, Mortark codpiece is going to uh, as he charts get better because basically he's not taking you seriously and you're like fighting his retinue. And so, like, as you take off wounds, he, like, he suddenly decides to, like, fight you. And I fucking love that. Because that goes into, like, what I was saying on the stream last night, which is, like, look at this man. He says, fight me on my level. You won't. You know? And so he's, he, is, he is the epitome of that. It's great. And I love armies that are boss fights. And so, here we are. It's perfect. But, uh... Yeah, I'm I'm for it. Uh, I hope that they don't IDK me and make the coolest looking models terrible. Uh, I hope that. Well, the jokes on them, they all look cool. Yeah, it won't be hard to make them all shit, right? Uh, just as long as it's good, they make the army good. Cause I'm 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 on board with the aesthetic. I'm on board with your your fluff and your flavor. Uh, I like what you, I, I I you got me. You pitched me right. Uh, you've said all the all the key phrases. You've said some stuff. They did some world building in here too. Um, I know a little bit more about what's going on in the world of Age of Sigmar. Uh, you didn't mine old content. You gave me something completely new. Uh, I I'm just I'm I'm for it. You've sold me already. Just just follow through. You know, no empty promises, please. Um, but I think we've kind of exhausted our our subjects. I appreciate you all. Uh, hanging out. You don't think you're going to usurp thralls, but my battle on skeletons are, are are pretty slick. Yeah, I think they're pretty great. Um, and I'm just happy at the prospect of like a little bit more elite army, because 
whilst I love my traditional bone zone of 80 skeletons plus whatever support units, um, after uh, NashCon, which I was just at this this last weekend, uh, where I had two lists to play, and the only model I had that overlapped between my two lists was a Necromancer, and I was on Grand Host of Nagash. Uh, so my one list was a hundred models with Nagash and a Necromancer, and then just like all of the skeletons. And then my other unit was Black Knights, you know, cavalry, uh, different skeletons, a Necromancer, Vampire Lord on Zombie Dragon, so on and so forth. Um, after transporting around like 160 models, I'm ready for a, a break. And I understand that hordes are really good, but like, I think Fire Slayers was the thing that gave me hope for elite armies. It's, it's weird to say, but it gave me hope that Games Workshop has figured out how to make an elite army a little bit better to where elite isn't purely a liability like it has been for like Beast Claw Raiders. So maybe they've kind of figured it out. I mean, I do have four souls per body. Perhaps I get to capture as though I'm. This is twenty models here, right? I mean, these guys, yeah, they have four souls in their bodies. That's four wounds, right? I mean, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That's just stocks. That's math. Mm -hmm. Spawn of the King. You wouldn't happen to be uh, John, would you? But uh. No, I, I use Thralls as the unit of measurement for how good I think a battle line unit looks. No, you're not, John. Okay, cool. Sorry if I insulted you there. Four souls, four two. Souls, two and, yeah, four, like Stormcast souls, so they're two or uh, Blood Warriors and stuff. Yeah, fine. Yeah, so eight wounds a model, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Just when Mock Tribes comes out, have Mornfang not fucking suck. How about that? How yeah, about that? yeah Mornfang shouldn't suck. And I'm still pushing, as many of us are, Pushing for the large and in charge rule for ogres, I just, I just want them to capture based on their wounds. That does. I don't want that as my bone tithe army. Like you don't need to give that to me with the bone reapers, uh, because if I'm in the legion of gosh, I can ho theoretically ally in forty skeletons. Right? Cool. I've got them painted up already. Let's go. Just give ogres large and in charge. And quit with the, like, slow movement, low bravery, fours and fours shit. Like, fours and threes shit. Yeah, that's about The thing I want the most out of the Maw Tribes book, more than keeping Beast Claw's identity or any... Making Mornfang good, even, is please don't think that making Grotz playable so that every Ogre army runs 60 of them and now you can capture objectives, please don't do that. Like, let... You know, large and in charge really is the thing. Like, do that. Have wounds count for models. Runes remaining count for number of models for capturing. Perfect. And don't just, like, fix our objective problem by giving us a whole bunch of tiny, shitty-looking dudes. Yeah. That would, be the, that would be the absolute worst. The whole reason we chose a big, all-cavalry elite army is so we didn't have to play with 50 stupid-looking tiny snots with robes on. And, like biting people and then throwing little nets at them like please right yeah I, I, and make it the ogre thing so it even makes it to where you can't like take it works, ogres I mean, it works for gut busters too like do it for them too it makes sense there yep yep a blocks of 12 ogres will be kind of crazy but not really they're a block they... of 12 ogres is 48 wounds right for 400 points well, you can get 60 grots for that and that's 60 wounds so yeah you know, fair, fair, fair. Well, there's there's a practical element to the game, and I think the you know, Vince. Uh, one of the big things he's been talking about is the race to the bottom lately, and I, you brought it up on your show too. Um, so this this has kind of come to the forefront, I think, of community discussions is this race to the bottom with War Scrolls, um, mm -hmm. making an army just run more models to be good is just Games Workshop. Well, they they proved they didn't have to. They were proved they were capable. Of not doing that with Fire Slayers. Right. And Fire Slayers the, armies now have fewer models in them than they used to. Right. And and they're better. I've switched so back over to Rant they, Cam. They, they were able to do it. So keep doing that. Yeah, keep doing that. And I've switched back over to Rant Cam so that I can look directly at the camera and you can see the, 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 the full frontal here. Um, Games Workshop, please, I will give you my money. Uh, 
more money than I think you deserve, you don't need to make me buy extra models in your game. Uh, please don't. I don't want to buy 80 skeletons. I don't want to like. I don't want to see a future where I'm running 160 skeletons in Nagash for him to be competitive. You know, because yeah, I mean that's not going to happen with these guys. These guys look very. Oh elite, yeah, they're like but, super elite. Yeah. But like, nobody wants that. There's a practical element of the game where we're traveling around and we're bringing our armies with us and we want to cross-pollinate tournaments because that's also business for you because we go to a different tournament in a different state, a different country, and like that generates hype like residually and then person comes back and a friend is like, oh, I saw you went to Las Vegas and or like, I don't know, London or something. And you're like, oh yeah, for a tournament. And they're like, holy shit, for a tournament, tell me more. Right? Like, so don't... You don't need to sell me, like, extra models. Just sell me quality models. And I will pay the extra amount of money if that's what it means to you, Games Workshop. I really will. So, like, just let me carry less than 100 models to a tournament. I guess is all I'm asking as a death army. Uh, preferably, I'd like to be around 50, please. <laughs> Which is why I keep joking that I'm going to... I'm going to run this army uh, here as just... I'm If the Heavy Cavalry is battle line, which it kind of sounds like, because they talk about them in the same paragraph as, like, you have the, like, you know, the... What's the specific phrasing, which is really fucking funny? Um, something like towering egos. Uh, towering arrogance. Like, it sounds like these guys are your battle line, both of them. Towering arrogance, exactly. So, like, I'll just run more of the Cavalry just to run a smaller army, even if it's not the more competitive thing, because I'm just tired of moving around a, a hundred models now. Um, and, uh, and so like, please don't punish me for wanting to be practical. I mean, I'll still buy 40 of these guys, uh, because I want them on my shelf and I want to support your business. Cause I like you. Um, but like, don't make me have to run all 40 of them, you know, <laughs> But that, yeah, the Tyrant's sick. And I'm hoping we get a box set here because then Heywo and I just fucking, like, throw money, like, at Games Workshop while they laugh playfully asking us to stop. <laughs> yeah, like, stop. This is embarrassing, almost. All right. So, any questions from the chat? We'll, we'll wrap up quick. Uh, going to the, the Ask Me Anything portion of the show, except not anything, but... Uh, you know, any of the nerd peripherals. Uh, ask me some things. Yeah, ask me some things. So we guessing 60 bones for five? Huh? What do you mean 60 bones for five? I'm sorry. I don't know the conversion rate. I think it's going to be like 10 to five. I think I, I think you're going to see... I think you're going to see these dudes in, uh, in like units of 20 a lot. Or like tens. Not like full bone cast eternals, like so it's not gonna be like Stormcast Eternals numbers of low, but I think you're gonna see a lot lower than your traditional like forty chain rasp or forty forty skeletons. You want to see them make the butcher and uh would be happy if the tyrant does not go to the shadows. I'm not sure what the go to the shadows means. What do you mean? Then six buck, sixty bucks for five dudes. Make it forty, for five dudes. But they could. Well, it's it's sixty for ten witch elves, which I think is like the most expensive for a minimum sized battle line unit in the whole game. Is six. Don't do that. And that's witch elves. I think the next most expensive is fire slayers, even though they're fives. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm hoping they don't do that, but it's gonna. I think they're gonna be in boxes of five because that's what we ha we have shown here. So we're getting five. You know, the new models are expensive, right? Because they're good, so... Yeah, I think 45 for 5 is kind of where I'm calling it. Um, which is about what I'm willing to pay for it, I think. I hope not 60 for 5. That's that's kind of shitty. I could see 60 for the the cavalry guys. Yes. They're big. Yeah, they're big. They're, they're intricate. Fine. I mean, if those five guys, if, like, the proportions are off and we just don't realize it and they're on, like, 50 millimeter bases, okay, maybe. Yeah. If they're that, if they're that huge. Right. Right. Mm. 
No, he's got to be in the book, and uh, Butcher needs a new sculpt. Saying it, drawing the line in the sand. Well, Butcher's getting a new sculpt, no question. That, that's what I'm calling out. Of, I'm calling left field on this, this one. This is Butcher's getting a new sculpt. We already saw Tyrant getting a new sculpt. Hopefully, that's not all of the new sculpts. Okay. But the one I'm sure of is Butcher. Butcher's getting a new sculpt. All right, cool. There's your line in the sand. I really, really wish that Ogre Bulls and um, Iron Guts would be, but we saw Ogre Bulls already in the video, to my chagrin, so those guys are sticking around. That that weak-ass sculpt is sticking around. Hmm. I think you're right, LLV, about the cavalry. I think they're going to be 70 bucks for three. I don't think there is... What are uh, how much are eels? No, uh, eels is a bad. One. How much are skull crushers? And how much are gorgrunta? Gorgrunta is probably the best comparison, I think. Yeah, I, I mean, like, what what's a box of gorgrunta cost? In other words, because I believe the most expensive cavalry box in the game are the um. What's his name? Thundercats. Archons. Oh. No, Archons. 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 Uh, Archeon. Yeah, Archons are the three Chaos Lords. Yeah. I'm blanking on their name for some reason right now. Va Varengard. Varengard. Yeah, Varengard. Yeah, um... I can see him being three for 70. Uh, I hope they're three for 60. Varengard, by the way, are three for 100. And... Uh, yeah, like, besides just not actually being very pointed, like, not being pointed very well, mm -hmm. that's a big reason why people don't run them in, like, mixed chaos and stuff. Yeah, I can see the, the, the uh, Death Riders, the Kavalos uh, Death Riders being being 3 for 70. I hope they're 3 for 60. Or Grunta are 3 for 79. Yeah, they're going to be 3 for 70. They're they're 3 for 70. I think that's a lot. And Gore Grunta are, are a lot more elaborate of a, of a model. And they're on the Mornfang basis as well. Mm. And the important thing are, you know, both of these that we're talking about are brand new AOS sculpts, Gorgrentazar and Brandgodar, I think. Mm -hmm. Or at least build with it in mind. Meg, I'll get to your question in a second. Um, yeah, I think the I think these guys are coming in at 70 for 3. Um, I hope they're kind to us. And what, Enlightened are 45 for 3. Like. Yeah. And enlightened are old sculpts, which is why I didn't bring them up. So I think like, I think they're from Warhammer Fantasy. Uh, yeah, forty k. Yeah, and so like I'm I like na naively, optimistically, I'm hoping they're sixty for three for these guys, and I'm hoping forty five for five for these guys. But sixty for three if they're on the tiny bases, seventy. Yeah, or I seventy or or Gorgrunta price if they're on the big bases. Yeah, I think they're. I, but I think I think uh, LLV will nailed it. I think it's gonna be seventy bucks for three of them. Um, yeah, probably. Please, for fuck's sake, don't make the uh, the other battle line sixty for five, though. Like, god damn it, don't do that to me. Sixty for five. <laughs> please don't. Uh, <laughs> like, please don't. Um, uh, I beg you. Well, what are Hearthguard Berserkers? Let's just uh, let's just see. Here. <laughs> um. Uh, we don't know, but I bet you they're they're. I bet you they're thirties. I think they're thirties. I've got a forty-five for five. So there's no way these skeletons are sixty for five. You know that's, that's out of control. Yeah, they're so forty-five. For, they're forty-five. For they five, should be forty-five for five on. Uh, they should be forty-five for fives on thirty mils. Well, it's true that Hearthguard Berserkers are much tinier because they're dwarves, but they have like massive beards and mohawks, so it adds detail. Too. Hair, hair adds detail. Yeah, uh, not just a four up. It also yeah. adds detail. Yeah, so we got these guys here, and then you can see the fifty mil. Uh, most guys don't know what base size these inventory are or these um, infantry are. Thirty two yeah. or forty, one of the two. I'm thinking I think the thirty twos. I don't know. I think 32s? they're thirty twos. I think they're thirty twos. They could be forties if they're going full stormcast, but I don't think they are. Their faces are pretty detailed for thirty two, maybe Maybe. Do we have a picture of them standing next to something so we can Yeah, the only picture I have of them standing next to is the cap I took out the video here. 
you will pay Nagash's oh, tithe. Oh, yeah, they're, they're 32. They're I, think they're, I think they're 32 is because the more gas back here, the, the most gas back here are 50s. I, the, they've got to be on 50s. So this looks like a 32 to a 50 to me. Um, and then you've got, these guys are on the, stand. they got to be on standard cavalry bases. Um, the sta like the, They're on the Black Knight base, which is fine. Um, which means in my proxy, yeah, 32s, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Um, so 45 for 5 is what I'm hoping. Um, but I'm going to, if they're both battle line, which I think they are because they're both in the same sentence or the same paragraph, um, I want, I, I, I want to run a more cavalry heavy army. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to be running a lot of the cavalry. I think at minimum 18 of these, the, the, the sweet ass cavalry dudes. Uh, but that's just, that's just my direction right now in my head. Um, and then going back to this question we got a while back, Mega question: How do I, how do I, how to find in my area, find AOS in my area, friendly local gaming store? Chicago should be a place to play. Grognards around the Chicago area is your gaming store if you're in that area. Go to Grognards, play at Grognards. Uh, that's your store. Uh, if it's like 40 minutes away and you're in the Chicago area, go there anyway. Um, that's your store. Uh, you're gonna play. Uh, you, you asked uh, how to find AOS in my area. How to find AOS in your area is to just start asking on the Facebook groups. Uh, that's the only thing they're good for is reach. Uh, their opinions are terrible, so don't listen to them beyond, hey, where do I play? But yeah, Grognards, if you're in the Chicago area, is the store you want to go to. If you go to Grognards, uh, you will play against uh, my friends and a lot of guys from the Milwaukee area. Uh, and you might even encounter me, uh, like a random encounter in Final Fantasy. So, go to Grognards. That's where you go. That's where you play. Uh, good caliber of player. Um, a high density of games. They run a lot of uh, they run a lot of one-day tournaments. So, you're going to get in reps. You're going to get in quality reps against people who want to win something. Uh, it's uh, But you're also going to run into people like Kyle Minimum Pants, who was in the chat early, earlier. He's one of the best humans I know in this community. Uh, you'll run into Christian Ware on occasion. Uh... Also, another one of the best dudes I know in this community. Like, not tryhards, not whack, just people who genuinely love the fucking game. So, uh, we're, yeah. Also, Facebook groups. Yeah. Those are the thing. Yeah. Like, find out the local Facebook group for AOS or exactly. game stores. Yes. And then yeah. you can post, like, hey, looking for a game today. Um, figure out when they, when they have game days and stuff like that. That's the other way of doing it that I found. Yeah, so um, Facebook, uh, yeah, Facebook groups are bad for a lot of stuff except for reach and finding games. So you can find I mean, games. Facebook, I mean, like local Facebook group, like yeah, the Facebook page or the Facebook group that a lot of local game stores make to help facilitate games, or some like you know Madison area Age of Sigmar players, you know something like that, like Chicago area. Yeah, yeah I'm in Sigmar the Post. yeah, I'm in the Fox Valley um, group is the main group I usually go to for games right now. Uh, and then just, like, honestly, the people I've already met through the tournament scene. Uh, and then, obviously, Haywo and our, our little, like, tiny, tiny circle. Um, but, yeah, you you meant, you meant already said specifically where you are. Well, not specifically, but close enough. So, Grognards is where you want to go, my dude. Uh, beyond that, uh, Facebook groups for gaming. Um, not necessarily, like, AOS fan page, but um, you'll find, a, as Haywo was saying, like, whatever the local gaming store groups are, uh, the county county AOS group, like things like that. LLV wonders, but if Facebook book, uh, but if Facebook group opinion is so terrible, didn't a large mini company just balance the whole game based on their feed? No one would actually do that. That would be so embarrassingly unprofessional. It would. That be. must be a rumor. That's got to just be a rumor. Fake news. 